In this lesson, we will look at what happens in an inelastic collision between a block and spring mass system. And we'll be doing that by answering this question, which reads, a 0.20 kilogram block traveling at 20 meters per second slides into and sticks to a 0.80 kilogram block resting at a frictionless surface and connected to a spring with a force constant 80 newtons per meter. What is the angular frequency, frequency and displacement as a function of time? Also, what fraction of the original energy in the moving block appears in the system? Let's begin with a quick illustration of what's happening. We have a block that is 0.20 kilograms that is sliding at a velocity of 20 meters per second and colliding with a spring mass system that's at rest where that is the other block being 0.80 kilograms. It's connected to a spring and the spring is connected to a wall. Once these two collide, we have a total mass of 1.0 kilograms. And obviously, that kinetic energy will be transferred over to this spring mass system. And that's part of what we're looking for. Now, the reason why this is an inelastic collision is because when this block hits this block, which is attached to the coil, they don't just bounce off of each other. They stick. And that's an example of inelastic collision. Whenever that happens, we can use the conservation of momentum formula, which tells us that the momentum initially is equal to the momentum final. And momentum, which I've represented by the letter P here, is calculated by taking the mass times the velocity. So let's go ahead and write down the mass times the velocity initially, and the mass times the velocity after the collision occurs. So that's the combined mass times the final velocity. The mass initially is 0 0.20 kilograms, and the velocity is 20 meters per second. The final mass is the combined mass of 1.0 kilograms, and the velocity is what we're looking for. So by solving for V sub F, we have found the velocity after these two blocks have collided. And to solve for V is easy. You just divide both sides by 1.0 kilograms. Let's go ahead and use our calculator. We have 0 0.20 times 20. That's the numerator of that fraction. We don't need to divide by one because it will give us the same answer. And the answer is 4.0 meters per second. So that's the new velocity the moment they collide. Now the reason why this value is important is because now we can find the energy of the spring mass system. It's also important to note that this right here represents a displacement of zero. So this is the velocity when essentially the displacement is equal to zero meters. And that occurs at time zero. Let's go ahead and calculate the energy using this formula right here, where I have energy is equal to the potential energy plus the kinetic energy of the spring. Let's see if we're given what the value of K is in the question. We're actually told that it's 80. So I can substitute K as 80, the spring constant, newtons per meter. And as I mentioned earlier, that the velocity of 4.0 occurs when X is equal to zero. So if I place X as zero here, then this whole term goes to zero and we don't have to worry about the rest of that plus the mass of them combined being 1.0 kilograms, the velocity of 4.0 meters per second to the power of two over two. So this will tell us the energy of this mass spring system. 1.0 times 16, because four to the power of two is 16, divided by two makes 8.0 joules. All right, so it's 8.0 joules at a time of zero and a displacement of zero. Now remember the goal of this question is not just to find the energy, but also if we look back, they want us to find the angular frequency, the frequency and displacement as a function of time. So let's continue with angular frequency. That's represented by the Greek letter omega, and that's the lower case. And all you have to do technically is take the value of K, which is 80 newtons per meter, 
and divide that by the mass, which is 1.0 kilograms. This should end up giving you a value that's in per seconds. So whatever your answer is, the units are one over seconds. We have the square root of 80 divided by one, which is the same thing as the square root of 80, and that is equal to 8.94. We'll round that to 8.9 per second. So that's the angular frequency. To get the frequency, frequency, remember, is one over the period. And period, in this case, is, I'll write down the formula here, period is two pi over the angular frequency. So let me just continue my work down here. I have the frequency being one over the period and I'll replace that expression in for P. The angular frequency is 8.9 per second. And if you divide all of this out, it's like saying one divided by two pi over 8.9. That gives you 1.4. So the frequency is 1.4. Again, the units are per second. And lastly, they want us to find the displacement as a function of time. Now, you have to be a little clever with this because there are two ways to represent this, either with cosine or sine. Generally, you will choose the one that relates to your problem. And remember that sine, the sine wave starts at zero and zero and the cosine wave starts at its maximum. Now in our case, when they first collide, the displacement is zero at time zero. So it makes sense to represent it using sine. I have the displacement x is equal to an amplitude sine omega t, and you don't need to add a phase angle here. This will do. We already found omega, and it is 8.9. So I have a sine 8.9t. And now we have to solve for a. Solving for a requires a little bit of logic. So remember this formula right here, e is equal to kx squared over 2 plus mv squared over 2. Well, if we look at that equation again, we have e is equal to kx squared over 2. And if we want the maximum displacement, that actually represents our amplitude for the equation. So the maximum displacement is the amplitude of the sine function. I'll replace A with the amplitude, and I already know the energy of the system. It was found earlier as eight. So I have eight is equal to our K value of 80, and that's in joules, that's in newtons per meter, and A is what we're looking for over two. Technically, if we solve for A here, using a little bit of algebra, we have found our amplitude for this equation. So I can do that easily by multiplying both sides by two. And then I have two times 8.0 joules. Then dividing both sides by 80 newtons per meter and square rooting will give me the amplitude in the units that I'm looking for, which is meters. So 16, because two times eight is 16, divided by 80, square root of that is 0 0.447 or 0 0.45 meters. 0 0.45 meters is the amplitude, which is the maximum displacement, and that can be substituted in for A. You may also convert 0 0.45 into centimeters if you like. You can make it 45 centimeters. It's really up to you. And that right there represents the function for the displacement in terms of the time. So that pretty much completes the question. If we look back, it says what fraction of the original energy, the eight joules, in the moving block appears in the system? So how much of that eight joules Obviously, 8.0 is going to be less than the original because all that energy gets transferred over to the spring and it has a spring constant, so it reduces that energy down. Let's find out what the initial energy was and compare it to this 8.0 joules. And for that, we'll use the kinetic energy formula, which is mass times the velocity over two. 
The mass of the block originally was 0 0.2 kilograms. The velocity was 20 meters per second to the power of 2 over 2. Now, I don't want you to think that this equals to 8, so I'll just put a barrier here. Now, if I use my calculator, 0 0.2 times 20 to the power of 2 over 2 makes 40 joules. So 40 joules became 8 joules. And if we divide this by 8 and that by 8, we get 5 to 1. So the 8 joules represents 20% of the original 40 joules the block had, the energy that the original block had, and that was transferred over to the spring, making it 8 joules. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below.